going. All right, so constant pressure calorimetry. Constant pressure calorimetry is still done in that coffee cup calorimeter that I was talking about last two days ago. I'm getting lost in what, time, what day of the week it is. But two days ago, we talked about a coffee cup calorimeter. Um, we're still, but we can measure the enthalpy change. So we can measure what the value of delta H is from that. And the way we do that is this. Uh, delta H is going to represent the heat transfer per mole, the molar heat transfer. So what we wind up doing is we wind up calculating the Q of the reaction. So we find out how much energy that the reaction gives off, and then we divide that by the number of moles that were used in that reaction so that we get a value of energy per mole. And that is what delta H is expressed in. Delta H is expressed in energy per mole, so that's how we're going to wind up doing it. It's basically a two-step process. What's the difference between delta T and delta H? All right, delta T, the difference between delta T and delta H. <laughs> delta T talks only about change in temperature, only thermal changes. Delta H talks about all energy changes, because H is enthalpy, which talks about all energy. So if there was nuclear energy involved or if there's um, uh, kinetic energy involved, it's going to talk about those things also. Okay, so, delta H is all so delta H is going to be all energy combined together, whereas delta T is just temperature change. Okay. First thing that we wind up doing in a reaction like this is we've got to know the Q of the reaction. We've got to know how much energy was given off. And in order to calculate Q, I need to know M, S, and delta T, right? Now, there's only going to be one substance here that I've got enough information for. Which substance is that? Water, right? So I'm going to do the energy that's gained by the water. Um, how many grams of water do we have? All right, so I'm going to put 75.0 grams. The specific heat capacity of water is? 4.184 joules over grams degrees Celsius. And then delta T, what's the final temperature of the water? 26.7. And the initial temperature of the water? 19.8. Okay, and that's in degrees Celsius. <coughs> we do some quick math. It looks like three sig figs, right? And I've got this one written down already. Brett, tell me if I'm right. 2,170 joules? Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't put it in That's okay. All right. We got similar answers, though. 2,170 joules. So because they told me the number of moles, all I have to do now is take my joules and divide it by the moles. Because delta H... Here, delta H is equal to Q over moles, right? So I'm going to do 2,170 joules divided by 0 0.050 moles. Ooh. And I've got that done already. Let's see. I'm getting 43,300 joules. 400? Okay, I apologize. 400 joules per mole. Ah, okay, so we're paying attention. I, there are two mistakes in this answer. Okay, one mistake is that the reaction gave off energy. Water gained energy, right? So, so it's positive here. So when I come over here, I want to probably put in the Q of the reaction was negative. So the answer is negative. Because this was an exothermic reaction. It gave off energy. Correct. Either that or just change it when you get to your answer. Okay. Pat? Why do you use the moles of the sodium hydroxide instead of the water? Because what's actually doing the reacting? So that's why we want to do it in terms of moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay. Last step that we've got, the last step we've got is that these are usually written in kilojoules per mole, not in joules per mole. 
So we just want to move that decimal place three spaces and change to kilojoules. So 43.4 kilojoules per mole is a better answer for delta H here. Kilojoules per mole for sodium hydroxide, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward and basic. Okay.